take us through the selection. Firstly, the, the Ms McAdams, obviously been out for a long time, been suspension injury. Yeah. Yeah, so Shane coming in brings a, a slightly different dynamic ahead of the ball. It means we'll be a little taller. I mean, he's, he's more of an aerial player, but he brings that ground level pressure as well at his best. And, you know, he's been back three or four weeks. So we, uh, I would say at our, at our best, and I think Shane at his best, it really adds to that, that forward line dynamic. Um, it changes us a little down there. And we're, you know, we're keen to inject him We've been keen to get him back in as soon as we can, but we wanted to make sure that he had enough games under his belt that he could perform at the level. We're confident he's, he's got that footy into him now. So he'll come in. Um, and obviously Jordan Butts back in behind the ball after his concussion. Um, and that changes our, our, our look behind the ball as well. And not only gives us a little bit more height, but also changes the role for those guys now not needing to play as tall like Hinge. And, um, you know, Max played a little taller last week. So... Um, yeah, a couple of really strong ins for us, um, which is tough for some of the boys that, that won't be in, but at the same time, it's about squad, and so uh, they've got an understanding around that. What led to the Soligo omission? Solly's more, Solly's is more about the experience he's gone through to this point, and he's not the only one. You know, that's, It's not just physical um, fatigue that comes in. There's some mental fatigue that can come in with that as well. His form's been a little up and down, and, and he's been very open to that. You know, very very good for our home games, slightly off in the away games. And that's something that he'll continue to work on. And as I mentioned before, he, he's not the only player in that boat. Our, our form's sort of been the same as a team. So for Solly, this is uh, um, freshen him up, um, both mentally and physically. Um, he's a big part of our future. We, we don't want to continue um, you know, with this one-on-one -on -one off trend. Um, sometimes a circuit breaker can be a real benefit for players to, to go away for a, for a game. Um, we'll freshen him up this week as well, so he won't play Sample. Um, he'll be our non-playing emergency, and if needed, he'll come in and play. Um, but for him, it's, it's, it's a bigger picture look. Yeah. Is this something uh, across the whole squad or exclusive to the younger players? In terms of um, this time of year having a bit of a dip? Yeah, it's not exclusive to younger players. There's no doubt, I think across the league you'll find a lot of players, this is the toughest part of the season, is pushing through that that third quarter. You know, that um, we're coming into final. Well, I mean, a lot of teams now are playing finals footy. I, I watched last night's game, Sydney Bulldogs, I thought it was a fantastic game of footy, but it was finals footy. You know, both teams playing on the edge of, of getting into finals, especially Sydney. You know, that was a, a do or die, almost an elimination for them. Um, and I thought they were fantastic in the footy they played. So we're, we're in a similar position. You know, if we want to um, you know, get towards the end and be in the fight at the end of the year, um, all these games that are coming up are going to be at the highest of standards and we're playing against the team that sits right at the same slot we do. They want our spot, we want theirs. So I would expect we're going to see some really high-level footy. Um, with that, we need a team that's ready to go every week. I'd say last week we came up against the Bombers who... You know, probably jumped us at the start of that game, um, and we weren't ready for that. For whatever reason, this week we'll be ready. Do you have to stress that, to the, or do you stress that to the players that these are cut throat games at this time of year, or is it about process and it's just obvious that where, where you're at? It's a balance. It's it's a bit of both. We we don't hide from the fact that they're huge games. You know, they're eight point games, and that's how they're sort of talked about through the media. Um, we know how important they are. I mean, every game through the year is, you, you win the early ones, you, you don't find yourself in these positions. So we don't look at any games or take any game lightly. Um, and we go in with a process of the way we want to play, not so much looking at the outcome. But the importance of us getting that process right and the intensity, the energy and the intensity, you know, to, to match it with our oppo, if not, you know, start well. We've started really well this year. Last week was, was one we had off um, and it ended up being costly for us. You mentioned Shane brings a different look to the forward line. I imagine that means different roles for some of the other players. Maybe someone like Josh Rochelle doing something a little bit different this week. You're hoping maybe they can play him into a, a bit of form or have more influence on the match? Um, I, I think for Josh as well, the form's been a little up and down for, for Joshy. I thought he was fantastic against North Melbourne, probably one of his best games, and he played majority midfield in, in that hit out. Um, on the weekend, you know, with the team being slightly down, it does make it harder for those younger players. 
um, you know, whether they try and do a little bit too much at times, you know, trying to get the team back into it, and that, that little bit of a lack of experience. But um, I know Josh will bounce back. He'll play a similar role to that that he has been playing to this point, where um, you know, his weapon is being forward of the ball and finding the goals. Um, at the same time, I think, I think over the years, you're going to see Josh become you know, quite a strong midfielder in the competition. And so we want to continue to train him up in that area and, and build his body up, get his strength up to the level where he can go with some of the best. What's been the main takeouts, apart from obviously the start, but just in general from last week's game coming out of the review? Oh, we, we just lacked aggression. We, we went in with an intention to get at him. We, we got that wrong. There was, there was a little bit of grey in the way you know, we were going to go about it and we sat off. Essendon, were, Essendon, we knew coming in, were a very good side at moving the ball length of ground. Um, and unfortunately, we, we allowed them to do that probably as well as they'd done all year. Um, so it was really disappointing in the end for us to sit down and, and the plan we went in with, we, we didn't really execute. It went away from the way we've been playing our best footy, especially when we've been at Adelaide Oval. So um, it's a lesson for us that you know, we'd, we'd probably rather step on the aggression pedal a little more than we did last week than, than sit off and, and worry too much about protecting that corridor. But I'm sure today, we'll, uh, sorry, tomorrow, um, we'll come out uh, with a very aggressive style you know, where we'll get at the opposition. Chico, I guess, has actually jumped you the last couple of times. They have, yeah. Here, obviously, beat you round one. Why, why have they been a, a bit of a bogey side for you? Yeah, good question. We, um, oh, they're a very good side. I mean, I had a chat with Leon Cameron uh, earlier this week, and Leon was the coach of, of them when they put us away both times here at home. So... That was informative. Um, I get a better idea of exactly what they came in with. They're, they're a great footy side, and at their best, um, you know, they're going to be hard to beat for any side. But they've brought their best here for the last two times, so I'm sure they're going to be confident coming in. We haven't played our best footy in both of those games. Um, we've come out of them knowing exactly what we got wrong, so it's really about us. We've got to have to match what they've brought both times, and if, if they're able to bring that again. And then, uh, and then do what we've done at home games up to this point this year. So you sought Leon out, and can you reveal much about what you've learned? I, I won't tell you what he said, but um, they came in reasonably confident against us and, and came in and took it up to us. Uh, and on those occasions, we weren't ready for it. So we've, we've sat down as a group. We, we've got a number of things in place, obviously, but one of those is making sure we're ready. Is it a habit to call ex-coaches a club before game? Leon and I are reasonably close. Um, I learn a lot from Leon, so we continue to chat. We've actually had a chat the week prior as well. Um, yeah, I chat with a number of coaches just around what they're seeing in the game, and um, not all of them, though. Rory Sloan's 350th. Um, not yeah. only what he means to the club, but to you personally. Oh, Rory's, Rory, Rory is the club, really. Um, you know, we, we put values together as a footy club, but, you know, from... From our boot starter right through to you know our receptionist um, about care and compassion and connection and, and courage and Rory's all of those um, he epitomises every single one of them so he was an easy one this week just to sit down and talk about and watch some of the vision of what he does on field but also talk about what he does off field there's there's none better I think he's respected around the league by well, I'd say every single player and coach in the in the league for what he's been able to do and. He continues to do it this year for us, so he's been a real weapon for us this year, both on and off the field. And we hope we can return, I guess, the favour to him. You know, you want to perform well for, for your champions, and he's a champion of this club. You said earlier in the year that you thought potentially him and Tex might need to be managed or rested. I know he's been reduced game time a little bit yeah. during the week. Has it, has it surprised you that he's actually played every game so far this year? Um... Uh, yeah, yeah, it has. I mean, we have managed in games. Uh, we've managed during the week slightly with Sloaney. Um, he's really enjoyed and embraced that role. You know, he's when you go back and watch his highlights from across his career, he is a genuine, um, you know, in and under footballer where he wins a hard ball over and over and over. Some of the collisions we've seen on tape and his tackling is is second to none. But this year, he's he's adjusted his role slightly. Um, he spent a bit, a bit more time outside as far as the midfielder goes and he's done that really well. So that's allowed him to, to balance you know, his work throughout the year. Um, but it has surprised me we haven't had to look at a week possibly here or there. Coming off an ACL, I mean, it's a challenge for anyone, but he, he, 
he also worked harder than I've seen anyone to get back. And he said he'd come back bigger and stronger than ever, and he's, he saw it, he's shown that. Now, we've, we've still got seven weeks to go, but um, let's just hope we go really well this weekend for him. We've seen over the last few years the recruitment of local players, Dawson, Rankin, this talk around Mason Redmond. Why, why is it so important to bring local players back on long-term deals? I don't, don't know if it's only lo local players. Um, I think we're always looking to improve our list. Um, add to our list, you know, bring in talent, bring in the right characters. Um, you know, we're big on people and character at this footy club. Um, so we're always out looking at, you know, potential, um, I guess, improvements or potential people we can bring in. Every club's doing that. Every, every club has a different method about how they go about it, what they're looking for, whether that's, you know, just purely on field or whether it's on and off. Um, we'll continue to work in that space. I think we've, we've shown that we're getting that right. You know, Isaac, bringing Isaac back has been fantastic for this footy club, both on and off. And Jordan Dawson's now the captain of the club. So, um, you know, getting Jordan back in, he's really added to our group. And so we'll continue to, to work in that space.